coworker relentlessly pushed food on me despite my allergies, then insulted my appearance and eating habits when I finally spoke up. I, 24M, am a small man. 5 feet 4 inches and 103 pounds as of my last physical. I'm well aware I'm at an unhealthy weight. My entire life I've been small mostly due to illnesses and myriad allergies and it's admittedly a sore spot. I am working with my doctor to gain weight while still fitting in with my dietary restrictions, no meat, dairy, gluten, or nuts, and honestly I'm so much better than I was a several months ago and proud of myself for the progress I've made. A co-worker, Peg, 30F, got pregnant and recently returned to work late November she's been increasingly overt and uncomfortable in her concern for me. Peg made and brought in cupcakes for her return, and when I thanked her for thinking of us but refused, citing my gluten allergy, she was visibly upset. She didn't shout or complain much, just sighed heavily and said that she would put this one in the break room with the rest. I felt awful. Then, she brought me a steak sandwich the next day, on gluten-free bread. Again I thanked her, but I had brought in my own lunch and needed to focus on that. Peg told me it was in the fridge for when I finished. Ended up bringing it home so she wouldn't feel bad and gave it to my BF. Next day, she approached again. I refused again. She insisted. By now we weren't alone in the break room. She joked that it was rude to refuse a home-cooked meal in favor of that, my lunch. At that point I just took it and thanked her. BF ended up eating it. Then she just started leaving bagged snacks on my desk. She would approach with a snack or a portion of whatever she made for dinner the night before, and not leave me be until I had taken it. I went to our boss and explained that I felt uncomfortable and was told that she was probably feeling maternal and it would negatively impact morale to discourage her. So, been taking notes since then, what days Peg has given WH, at, when, who witnessed it, etc. from 12 eighths to now she's done it 23 times. Yesterday I took Peg aside and explained that while I was touched, I would appreciate if she wouldn't bring in anything else. She said that I should have said something sooner, she was only trying to help, have I seen myself in a mirror, does your boyfriend like you starving yourself? Among other phrases. Livid, I told her that maybe I didn't feel like sharing my personal medical history with her just so that my wishes were respected. For God's sake we work with a hospital, don't you know anything about HIPAA? We parted from there, me childishly storming off and her in tears. Have I already been a huge ass and would a report to HR just be the icing on the escape? Edit, to address a few commonly raised points. I said no, thank you, repeatedly, to her face when she gave the food. She in turn would refuse to leave my desk or to stop talking to me, in the break room or halls, until I took it. She returned to work late November, before Thanksgiving, and started this behavior almost immediately. I waited until 12 eighths to speak with our boss, who is a woman, if that matters, and only then started counting the incidents. She is also no longer pregnant, rather I should have said that she returned from maternity leave. I'm aware I misused HIPAA but was referencing it in the context that she should know better than to pry into medical history to satisfy her curiosity. Also I wasn't thinking clearly when I said that to her. Update 1 I went to HR, saying that the matter was settled, but I wanted it documented, subsequently was told that there would be an investigation and the incidents would be corroborated with witnesses, because as is the full record I claim is severe enough to warrant potential action for Pei and several other co-workers who also engaged in her behavior. HR started the process, apparently immediately, because I walked in yesterday to a shitstorm. This plunged the department into, civil war. Many agree Peg was out of line, some told me I should have kept the status quo, some said I was ungrateful and entitled. One said I should have handled this maturely and who could blame her when I look like that, and I should be ashamed of myself. Another co-worker suggested I work from home. Another told me he was sorry for not stepping in. I went to go get my lunch out of the fridge only to find someone had disposed of it and left behind the empty Tupperware. Nearly everyone has an opinion. The people in my corner have advised me to keep my head down and to take care. My boss held a meeting, first with Peg and me, then a second with just me. During the one with Peg, I was told to apologize for my part and Peg likewise. I'm sorry if I made you uncomfortable by caring about your health. My boss asked if I was satisfied now. I brought up Peg's comments and my boss said I invited them, no one would call that harassment, and I need to work on myself. Together we went through each of the 23 events. She excused each of them until I was left to feel like I'd been harassing Peg. The next meeting was even worse. Effectively boss said, I told you not to retaliate and instead you searched Peg out to harass her and your actions have expressed a worrying lack of cooperation with me and your team. She was also disappointed that instead of explaining that I needed her to resolve things, I escalated the situation well beyond the point of reason and cruel to someone who only wanted to help. She said I won't get far in life and I'm not likely to get anywhere vocationally if I can't be a team player and actively sabotage a happy workplace. She hoped I will learn from this teachable moment how to behave in a collaborative environment as it's inappropriate to involve HR for small misunderstandings. BF is spitting mad. I'm just tired, confused and hurt. HR seems sympathetic. Boss is very clearly on Peg's side. The office is split and tense. Current, Lee updating my resume and job searching. It really does feel like a nightmare. Haven't felt good going into work for a while, and this just made it times worse. Yes. See another post on my profile for further details as well. Also might be worth adding that we have worked together for two years prior to this.
The entire department is aware of the fact I have numerous allergies that severely restrict my diet. My boss and everyone above her is aware of my other medical conditions additionally. Commenter, isn't it weird that your colleagues that already know about your food allergies, a good number of them, not reacting when you are offered allergy-laden food? It doesn't make sense that they already know but are not even moderately reacting to it. Food allergies can kill, and them not doing anything is ridiculous, especially when this involves a good number of people. Oop, incredibly. As you can see, the office is terribly concerned for my health. Peg's name changed. 12 eighths, Peg approached with a pack of almonds. CN was nearby but did not get involved. I told her I can't have those and don't want them, but thank you for thinking of me. Approached EP straight after. Her response was that Peg was probably feeling maternal and it would negatively impact morale to discourage her. Peg approached after lunch, 2 colon 00 p.m. backslash tilde, asking if I wanted a coffee. No one around. I said refused. She said she had gotten a free coffee and asked me to take it off her hands. I said I didn't want the coffee. She left it on my desk. Threw it out in the break room. 12 ninths, Peg and CC ordered takeout from, diner backslash. She offered an order of fries and a chicken salad, saying she knew I need the protein and fries brighten anyone's day. I refused and she said but I bought this for you. I apologized and said I already had my lunch and didn't ask her to. She said that I need to eat more than rabbit food. CC added that it would warm me up. I refused again and said I was more than happy, with my lunch and didn't intend on changing my meal. CC told me to back off, op backslash, it's just a salad. I apologized for being short but I really was happy with my lunch. Peg and CC left and took the food with them. 12 tenths, 7.50 a.m. Coffee. Refused. Peg insisted. Refused again. She insisted again. Refused again. She insisted again. Just took the coffee to get her to leave me alone. Thrown out in the break room. 12.11, a handful of Hershey kisses on my desk after 9.30 a.m. meeting. Two packages of almonds on my desk after going to the bathroom at approximately 1 p.m. 12.14, at 11 a.m., Peg placed a Tupperware of rice on the table in front of me in the break room. CN, CC, DP, and KG were all there. She told me rice would add substance to my lunch. I said, thank you, but this is enough. People were staring and she wouldn't back down, standing directly in front of the table. I told her to take it back. She sighed and did. The break room was silent. I left to return to my desk. 12.15, Peg approached with salt and vinegar chips and a coffee with soy milk as soon as she walked in, 8 a.m. DP was there, but didn't get involved, as was KG and Eck. I said no, thank you, but I'll reimburse you the cost. She said the real repayment would be for me to take what she gives me without fussing. I said I don't want it and never asked her for this. She responded and that's why it's a gift. Bon appétit. KG suggested maybe waiting to be asked before buying someone a coffee and Peg said that ruined the surprise. Eck added that not everyone likes surprises. Peg rolled her eyes and stood waiting for me to take the drink. When I didn't, she put it on my desk. I gave the coffee and chips to Eck after she left. 12 sixteenths, came back from a meeting at 10 colon 30 backslash tilde m to a donut and croissant and hash browns on my desk. I approached her with the bag and asked if she put this on my desk. DP was there. Peg said you're welcome and I told her I won't eat this, so take it back. DP said I should eat I. T, stating I need to be fattened up and could use a couple dozen pounds. Mortified, I left to go back to my desk. 12 17, in the break room at 1 p.m., Peg tried to give me a ramen cup to supplement my snack, in reference to my lunch. I said no. She asked if it would kill me to be nicer. I said no, but the ramen might and left. 12 18, Peg tried to give me a coffee at 7.40 a.m. at my cubicle and stood there even after I said no. She proceeded to ask why I never ate. I said I eat, I just don't eat food given to me. I made a point to say it wasn't personal, I just only eat what I bring in for myself. She said that's sad, and I needed to loosen up. Eck walked by and greeted us both and Peg left, leaving the coffee behind. Thrown out in the break room. 12.21, Peg brought in a store-bought cake and put it in the break room. At 3 p.m. she said she noticed I nearly missed out but luckily she saved some for me. I said I didn't want the cake, or else I would have gotten myself some. She told me to have a cheat day and left the cake on my desk. I returned the slice to the break room and tossed it out. 12.22, Peg placed a bag of chocolate coins on my desk afternoon. I told her to take them back. She asked who doesn't want chocolate? I said me and she said maybe BF would like them. I followed her to her cubicle and gave them back. She rolled her eyes and scoffed but didn't further push. 12.23, Peg approached me around 10.15 a.m. in the hallway with a package of homemade cookies. I said no thanks, but I appreciated her trying to be festive. I wished her a Merry Christmas and continued walking. Peg approached again in the break room at noon. CN and PP were also there. She asked if I wanted her to drop off the cookies at my desk. I said no, I already said I didn't want them. CN said that they were super delicious and that Peg even bothered with the gluten thing. PP suggested I could bring them home to BF so it didn't go to waste. I said no, thank you and L, F to go back to my desk. After a meeting, 2.30 p.m., I came back to cookies on my desk and a note saying Merry Christmas. 
thrown away in the break room. 1228, Peg approached me in the break room at noon and asked if I ever eat anything fun. I tried to ignore her but she tapped on the table until I said I enjoy what I bring in. She gave me a chocolate orange and a pediasure, saying you can't be dieting over the holidays. Threw out both as soon as she left. 1229, at 4.30 p.m., Peg approached me at the time clock with a pair of granola bars and tried to get me to take them. I said no and said I needed to punch out. She wouldn't move until I took the bars. 12.30, grab locks? Locks? I said I didn't want it, and Peg spoke over me, explaining it as fermented fish with dill. I told her that was very interesting but I still didn't want her offering me food. CN was there, but did not get involved. CC said, wow, in an incredulous tone but didn't further react. 3 p.m. Peg tried to give me a donut and a latte. When I refused she just placed it on my desk. I gave both to Ek. 12.31, Peg tried to give me a batch of fudge. She only offered the chocolate variety but she also had made chocolate walnut and peanut butter variants and not only did I not want them, I did not trust that she was careful enough with cross-contamination. I said as much to her. She was affronted that I would call her dirty and I explained that it has nothing to do with cleanliness and everything to do with preparation, tools and surfaces. She sarcastically wished me a happy new year and left. January 4th, 2021, a tin of assorted chocolates left on my desk, presumably after I left as they were there at 6 a.m. and I am the first person into the office. Left in the break room as they were sealed. January 5th, 2021, Peg approached with a Tupperware container at 8 o'clock when she walked in. I said no, she told me I needed to be less picky. I told her that I appreciated her caring but I already had my own lunch, so please stop. She, told me then I could have it for dinner and put it on my desk. When I tried to hand it back to her, she put her hands up and said no give backs. Return to communal fridge. 5 colon 30 p.m. backslash tilde spoke with Peg concerning the food, no one around. I said I have been patient and understanding that she cares but I was not happy about my refusals being ignored, the comments about my food and body, and wished she would stop bringing me food. She said I should have said something sooner, and I pointed out that I had, repeatedly. She said I'm only trying to help and haven't you looked in a mirror recently? I said that was horribly rude. She asked does BF like you starving yourself? Even gay mean prefer meat, I said that any diet I was on and what I ate wasn't any of her business. She said clearly you can't feed yourself, I said she should focus on yourself and your kid and stop bothering me. I left the conversation then and drove home. Save for the changed names, this is nearly what HR received on top of a verbal meeting. Thank you. We'll do so. Working with a family friend who is a lawyer. She works in family court but has so far been invaluable in finding resources. For what it's worth boss and upper management are aware of my allergies. Itchy and raw hands, tear moons. Allergies are more than simply ingesting the substance. This is the last I will address to you on this matter. Update 2 When Ben mentioned having gone to Reddit about Peg, I somewhat dismissed that as useful and kept on supporting him in the real world. Life goes on. I happened to check his email recently and saw the notification of the anniversary, and a few folks looking for an update. He had given me the password a while back and open permission to check out what people were saying. I read up recently. Most of the comments and advice and well wishes were sweet. Others were harsher as they gave their take. Many people wanted an update. Over 30 plus people messaged him. My husband Ben passed on August 21st, T 2021 from complications of esophageal cancer. He was diagnosed in early May. We married a few weeks after, basically just the legal portion of it and a romantic dinner to mark the occasion. He promised me a wedding with the whole kid and caboodle for after he beat cancer. I think we both knew better, even then, but pretending and planning gave us something to look forward to and focus on instead of his sickness. It took him very quickly. Ben's boss was first suspended, then let go. So was Peg and a few others who collaborated with her. Ben received a settlement from the owner of the hospital and an admittedly generic apology for how everything was handled. I'd put money on the fact it just got too big to ignore, with too much being exposed and people speaking up. The boss's reaction, the meetings, removing Ben from group work emails and project updates, not responding to calls or emails and refusing meetings, all of which was documented by the automated message saying his emails were deleted without opening, even taking his work when he sent it to her for review and presenting it as someone else's, and Peg's behavior, sending out mass texts to others in the office about a hypothetical situation about an ungrateful friend forcing her to cook for him but then not eating it, or the group emails spanning months before things went down, discussing Ben's food and how he just has no taste because he wouldn't take what Peg offered. The exact phrasing was lewd, more than just food was implied, Ben's new boss was accommodating of his medical leave when the time came, promised that he'd have his job back when he returned. His medical bills were covered partially by the owner and a collection from some of his co-workers and our friends, but there was a huge chunk we still had to pay. I had to file a restraining order against Peg after her firing as she continued to try to contact us and stalk Ben.